Welcome Water Warriors! Prepare to plunge into the perilous and pivotal world of the PT Boat Service! The PT Boat is a new type of craft, differing from other naval craft in many ways. It takes determination of the highest order to successfully complete the mission. Nothing must stand in the way. The PT Service demands certain qualities from its men. The first and foremost of these is guts. Most PT men are volunteers, and in addition, specifically selected for this branch. They want to fight in close quarter action, and they have guts, or they wouldn't be in PT service. Their duties must be carried out in a calm and efficient manner when under fire of the heaviest kind, so that the success of their mission is assured. Ahoy and welcome back to Boat Crew. We're at Lunga. Same session for me, different video for you. And this is the tender that we accidentally fired some Mark 13s at. Fortunately, they were duds. No one noticed. And we are off. Lunga just keeps getting assaulted and we keep taking it back. Maybe we should stop in at Savo. Maybe that's why they keep attacking Lunga. It's the next natural step. Tulagi is holding strong. We have a new base at Pavuvu. And we've been harassing Sidu. There's been a lot of activity here. So we're trying to stem the flow of Japanese reinforcements. Medium base, no sign of activity inside. We'll keep moving on. It looks like they've had supplies dropped recently. So we need to keep an eye out for the subs. And the Fubukis. Fast transports. Speaking of the devil. Fubuki class spotted. Let's go get him. By hunting these big targets, we're going to fast track our supplies, that's for sure. Let's have a look at the high view. He's at rest. We have torpedo nets defending all of the ships at rest. So we're going to have to find a different angle of approach. The combat music started. Have we been spotted? I don't think so. Yeah, they're well defended by our torpedo nets, but if we can get in at a right angle, approximately 45 degree angle to the bow, we should be able to sneak a couple through. If we go really wide, we could possibly hit the tanker as well if it's exposed or far enough away from the net. There we go, the bow is peeking out. It'll be a difficult shot. Let's just keep widening that angle. Exposing more of the ship. If we come around enough, like I said, we may be able to hit the coastal tanker and the Fubuki will be totally exposed. Making sure to manage the distance so we don't get spotted. If we time this correctly, we could probably hit both ships at the same time. We have four Mark 13s on board. And let's just set up here for our attack. Alright, our target is sighted. The coastal tanker will be a hard shot, but we will try anyway. Torpedo sights active. We're just going to wait for the wave action until I'm certain we can line up with the coastal tanker. We want to hit that one first. Fish away. Fish away on the Fubuki. Should we go two? Now there's a slight chance that first fish may hit the Fubuki anyway. Let's have a look at the angle. Yeah, this is... Ooh, it might be tight. It might sail past the Fubuki. Might. Let's have a look how good the hitbox is. She's hit Fubuki. Right, we've got two hits. One to stern, one amidships. And she's she's going to go down real quick. That's good. That's the main threat down anyway. Unfortunately, we couldn't hit the tanker as well. Oh, we are taking mortifier now. Let's try and get this fish out quickly. Oh, I dropped the wrong one. I think. Yes, I did. All right, let's get moving. Drop, 
the wrong one. So that's going to miss by a mile. Is the ship making way? Yes. Yeah, that torpedo went wide, wide, wide. We'll get closer. We do have some escorts to contend with, but that's not going to be a problem for our new 20 mil on the back of the boat. Taking a slight glancing blow there from the coastal tanker. 20 mil just annihilating that small patrol boat. Got them all sighted up. The tanker has been hit by our torpedo. Just need to take down the sub chaser now. Did we hit? I can't see a hole. Maybe we missed. I saw the detonation. We're going to have to get nice and close before she shreds us. Hmm. I don't actually have anything else to use against her. Besides the main gun. We've taken heavy damage to the starboard side. She's listing. She's going under. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Did the torpedo hit? There's no damage on the ship. But it doesn't really matter. She's dead. Thank you for those resources. We did lose a man. I will collect all of these resources and we might assault the shore position as well. We still have a lot of ammunition left. Ty, what are you doing? Why are you using the mousetrap? Well, look at the minimap. You'll see a little red speck on the mini-map. That is an enemy supply submarine trying to make an escape. I'm trying to get some solid hits here with the mousetrap. Can we lure her to the surface? Not very accurate fire there with the mousetrap. Let's try again. Aiming a little bit ahead of the boat. Trying to account for, obviously, their travel time. Where's our splashes? Right in front. Will that force her to surface? It will. Let's be ready. Stay behind. We'll just shred her with auto cannon fire. Nice and safe out of the rear fire arc of that main gun on the front, the deck gun. Pretty sturdy. Let's use some more of the mousetrap. I think she's just inside the minimum firing angle, but it doesn't matter, she's sinking. Thank you very much. Do you have any money aboard? We need it. Okay, we've got a lot of supplies to collect. There's our friend. Mr. Warren Murray, get back on board the boat. One of our engineers, we need him. Running into the torpedo net. It does have a bit of give to it. A bit of realism. We should have enough for an, a decent upgrade at the next port stop. There aren't many shore defenses, so we will just clear up this base with our remaining ammunition. A couple of machine guns, a couple of watchtowers, nothing really to write home about. Three cans of ammo left. Let's get it done. Who would have thought there was a Japanese fleet here before? Certainly looks tranquil now. We need to go home back to Tulagi. Target spotted, the Shikanami. It's a fair distance away, the other side of the map. Not a concern at the moment. It's upgrading time. Let's have a look at the supply situation. If I put something on the deck... Oh, I could put that there and still have depth charges. That would be useful. But if you make it bigger, you lose the depth charges. Is that correct? Go repairs. And then we'll put our depth charges back. No, you can't do that. 
Okay, so if we want to use that secondary slot at all, we've got to forego supplies. And all of our slots are filled otherwise. That's our first, I guess, supply conundrum in the puzzle of building our boat. In the meantime, let's upgrade the anti-aircraft defenses. We've got the 50 cal on board now. And we need a few thousand more to fit the dual 20 mil. Let's go over to crew and I shall give the remainder of the men a weapon. Because if ammo is going to be a problem, then we want to keep everybody armed. Our medic needs a weapon as well. M19 bar for you, sir. And so everyone that is roaming the boat will have a small arm. Everyone else will be attached to a big gun or the helm. Let's create a craft preset, test this feature out. Let's call this one the Anti-Submarine Warfare Gunboat. Bit stormy here at Assimane, but it is lightly defended and it will give us an opportunity to create a bit of a, a link up with our other forces. At the moment, Tulagi and Lunga and Pavuvu are cut off from the main American push into the region and we need to free up some space drive a wedge through the center so we can resupply our forces as we advance into the Solomons. Boat's handling is a little bit tighter at the moment due to the wave action. She's flying a bit through the rough sea. Almost dry on ammo, but I think it's enough for us to clear this base out. Tuesday the 18th of August, we waited here until the invasion fleet arrived. Went down to Apio for a resupply. But we've got that under control and we finally linked up. We've got a supply route running through the center now. That's fantastic. Tulagi and Lunga should be able to be fortified now, as far as I understand it. Got a coastal tanker, but there's also something leaving the base, so we might get a double fight here. Right, who is going to suffer the wrath? Coastal tanker. Let's see if we can sneak a fish underneath the port. The last few times I've tried this, our torpedoes bounced off the pier. And it's because they hit the pylons. So we'll see if we can sneak one through. It's not a very strong base, so we shouldn't encounter much resistance in the form of base defenses. I just hope there's also a torpedo boat sitting there at berth. It would be fun if we hit that guy instead. And we did! The splash damage from the torpedoes absolutely smashed the torpedo boat that was at the pier. And the coastal tanker is now on fire, but... Oh, we just took a solid hit there. Someone went flying overboard. That would be our XO. He seems to like a drink. We will go back for him because that coastal tanker is in a lot of trouble. We've got enough time to stop here. Got some supplies to pick up. That's going to hit us if we don't move. Right, let's grab that RP. Spray down the shore defenses. And make like tree and leave. Can we duck underneath that shot? No, we cannot. It seemed to only be a minor glancing blow. Our men haven't taken much damage. I'm pretty impressed with our ability to keep everyone intact.
It's tempting to run without medikits, but I just know that's a recipe for disaster. I did it in my last campaign. We nearly lost everybody. The team are becoming pretty experienced too. Should experiment with shuffling them around the different positions of the boat so they're experienced all rounders. That way, if the engineer gets blown overboard, you still have someone that knows his job. There's a big delay between getting ammunition from the front of the boat to the back of the boat as well. Most of our armament sits amidships and further back. Alrighty, we did a good job, I think. All the ammo's gone, it's time to leave. I think we've done a pretty good job of this place. Made a bit of a profit, making sure that we are making a profit with every attack that we push. If there isn't a target that provides RP, then I'm not really interested in fighting them unless it's unless they're assaulting one of my bases. Or if we're going to intercept a large force heading to a base, but that's about it. Let's see what these guys want. Hello. Another merchant ship. Coming in at a nice 90 degree angle to the merchant ship. Get a little bit closer before we loose the fish. Just drop it as soon as we see the flare. <laughs> we have been spotted. The fish is away. We're going to do two. Motion ship is a bit of a larger target than a coastal tanker. We are almost out of ammunition, so we can't put up much resistance to these, these guys here that are chasing us. Our threat level's pretty high at the moment. I don't want to get jumped by zeros. One hit, one miss. Merchant tanker is down, but we are out of ammunition except in the 50s. No more to reload. Oh wait, we have more in there, 20. I don't understand sometimes. That is a decent haul. They must have been on their way to resupply one of the bases. I really wanted to put one of the Mark 24s in our secondary slot on the front, but we are 6,000 short on that, so we will stick with the depth charges for now. I've put a triple rack on the back, because I like the old depth charge attack. The XO does not have a weapon, so we are going to give him a bazooka. And that should leave us a little bit more money to upgrade our mouse traps to rockets. Welcome to <laughs> Bazooka Town. So let's whack on those rockets. We only get four aside, but I think I can make that work. We've got the new aiming system. Let's see how much damage we can do with them. Right, Asimane, we will see you later. We're heading out. Where should we go? Let's go back to Lunga. They've taken it again. No, oh. Lunga is just a tug of war at the moment. We had a massive battle there last episode. It must be a large force, because we had our base being held there. Oh, two for Bukis, we've got Minesweepers, Subchasers, Amphibious Tanks, Landing Boats. You name it, they are throwing it at Lunga. Well, we shall have to do what we do best. And destroy everybody. And the Fubukis are underway, they are, they're on station. Oh dear. Minesweepers. Rockets. Please, fire. See if we can get some lucky hits there on the minesweepers. They've put the flares up. We put ours up first. Oh, it doesn't appear to be any hits, but I do like the amount of view that this new aiming system gives us. It's going to help me dodge and weave through the Fabuki's furious onslaught. Oh, look at that. They're coming straight at us. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take the fight right to them. We're going to... Ignore the screening fleet largely. 
Just the closest ones. Anyone that's going to interfere with this attack. Watching out for those big 5-inch shells. Let's run him through the center. Can we fit? There's enough room. P2 Bert, go Bert. Drop the depth charges on the port side, please. On the starboard side, too. Depth charges all around. We dropped all eight uh, all eight depth charges in one attack. We have taken serious damage to the starboard bow. Looks like one of the Fabukis is already drowned. The other is turning around to face us. Full broadside at the moment. Looks like a damaged turret to his rear. Let's take out his screen and we'll push the attack with our torpedoes. That was a pretty gutsy move there on the part of Murray Baker. Skipper of PT-104 Lean Jean. But she really proved her name there. Squeezing through the tight spaces between the Fabukis. Taking a clapping to the back. Let's get rid of these sub chasers. The boat is a little bit worse for wear. The repair team are on it. We've lost two men overboard. Unfortunately, both of those men are our loaders, including the XO with his bazooka. Oh, that was a close one. Let's take out the... <laughs> ah, I don't know what to do. He's pushing me against the shore. Taking splash damage there. We can't afford to lose any more overboard. Fortunately, we still have the engineers. They're trying to patch up whatever's left of the boat. Right, we've got a full bow on aspect here. Let's just go straight in. Fish away. He's turning hard to avoid the fish, but he's just presented his rear. <laughs> hit him amidships, hit him in the bow. Shockwave blasting men off of the Fabuki. Sub is just absolutely flabbergasted at what has happened to his escorts. But he won't have to write a report. We're going to finish him off as soon as we can get this boat back above the water line. Come on guys, stop. Yeah, we need to stop this. We need to stop. We need to get someone else on the repairs. Holy moly. There's a big risk of losing the boat right here. The only reason we've stopped. Keeping an eye out. Oh, now we're going in bow first. Please, someone get on the repair. Sub chasers down. Everyone's down. That was frenetic battle. But it's calm now, apart from that mortar position that they must have set up overnight. Let's go and pick up these lonely supplies. We're going to need them. Whew. PT-104. Gonna make a name for yourself, that's for sure. I totally forgot about the minesweepers. They must have fled. They're the ones I fired the rockets at at the start, so we are going to give them the same treatment. Rockets only. We quickly went home and resupplied. We're ready for round two. I'm surprised they're still here. Really? Take that. Staggered shots. Hope that's enough lead. There's a little bit of scatterer. Not quite enough lead there. Now she's turning. She didn't like that. Let's get the guy that's running away from their formation. Full ship length worth of lead at that range. Made her rock, that's for sure. Fire a fish. Stubborn fish away, but that's just a coup de gras, that one. Hitting her right in the main gun. Now her sisters shall join her on the bottom. Along with all the other Japanese vessels that have been destroyed here in the last two weeks. Solid hits with the rockets. At least four hits, I reckon. They reload very quickly. That will be a bonus of having all that ammunition sitting up on the bow. Watchtowers are trying to help the fleeing minesweepers, but it's too late for you guys. Couple more rockets in the rear. And they're done for. Excellent. Take that. More, more, more. But oh, we've run out of ammo now. The minesweepers drop some resources too. That's a nice little addition. Give me a reason to hunt them down. Another successful fight at Lunga. I hope we don't spend the whole campaign fighting here. We have to start pushing the attack out and our target list is starting to fill up. Our threat level was really high, so I'm just sitting here outside Chulagi. The invasion fleet just arrived at Lunga. 
So we may go down and have a look, but they've got it under control. There's hardly anything there. There's obviously a constant stream of reinforcements heading to Sidu. So we're going to hang around out here. Look at that. 47 fleet strength. What is it? Minesweepers and sub chasers. They're heading somewhere in a hurry. It's a pretty substantial force. I reckon it's an attack force. It's 67 fleet strength. They, the only thing they don't have is one destroyer, which you would probably normally see in the attack forces in this game. It's not a supply convoy. So, like we have been doing, we just want to draw the fleet to us as slowly as possible and just pick them off. If we take too much damage, we'll pull back. When we see a weakness, we'll press an attack. Like this guy's isolated, so we'll focus him down. We've oversped the engine. The minesweepers look like they might be running, whereas the, the smaller craft are coming at us. But it's just like ninjas at the moment. We fight them one at a time. We pick up our man that I just realized went overboard. Oh, you'll never guess who it is. Vittori. Again. He must just always be in the perfect position to take a shell hit. Alright, he's picked up. Subchase is coming at us one at a time. Since we put the 20 mil on the back, they aren't really a threat. They were pretty hard to crack with just 30 cals, but the 20 mil just bursts them up. And I think we almost have enough to start upgrading again. If we can get something off these minesweepers. They're all dead. So we need to hunt down the minesweepers because they give us money. You ready to die, minesweepers? We're coming for you. Rockets are ready. Line them up. Fire away. It looks like one of those minesweepers will manage to get out of the combat zone. One ship will live to tell the tale of the night of terror. <laughs> While the boys of PT-72 were very much nomads, the boys of PT-104 are very much stoic defenders. They don't let anything enter the waters of the slot. <laughs> Goodbye, boats. Adding on the 20mm dual mount, that will literally double our firepower. 320 rounds per minute times two. Obviously, there will be more ammo consumption. To deal with the extra ammo required, we will need to increase the size of the front deck. But by having that ammo there, we are foregoing our mortar or any other specially special weapons. So I kind of feel like the 80 foot Elko is very much more specialized. You can build it more specialized. I felt like the Higgins was like, oh, I can do anything kind of boat but not necessarily well. Savo Island is really just a pain in our side and so we are clearing it out. No major battles this time. Seems like the fight that PT-72 had here really quelled any Japanese resistance and we haven't seen much here. We are pressing the attack at Savo Island but there is yet another attack at Lunga but our defenders are well equipped. We have a fleet there holding that base for once. Stopping in at Sidu, it looks like it's just being constantly reinforced. What have we got here? Coastal tankers and the works. Recon scout planes have seen us. The game is up. The boats will start moving. We've made managed to cross a fair bit of distance. We'll take down these scout planes as they come back. And then we'll concentrate on our foe at the pier. Wasting ammo doing it this way, but I want them away. Get away from my boat. Okay, the shore batteries have opened up. We have quite a few targets 
massed together. Look at that. Two coastal tankers have just started to move. That would have been great to sneak in there close and get both of them at once. We can still do that, just minus the sneaking. We have two fish, eight depth charges. Just having a look, we've got rough seas today, large swell. The boat doesn't handle as well. Takes more time to respond and we are getting air as we come off the top of the waves. First contact there with the enemy. Making sure we are paying more attention to where the shell splashes are. Alright, the tankers have opened up on us, I think. Is that a tanker or the sub chaser? Storm of shells, whatever it is. We have lost a man overboard. Fortunately, it's not the XO this time. I'm going to weed out the, the screening ships so we can have an unmolested attack. There we go. Our line's looking good on the tankers. We might get... Oh, I thought I was going to get hit there. No, no jaw. Oh, there we go. I knew it was coming. Two in a row. I've lost control of the boat. It's not handling very well. Murray Baker's taken shrapnel. He's having difficulty turning the helm. Stanley. Aboard, but... Actually, very, very wounded. God, the, I cannot control it. It's not working. There's a lot of delay in my commands. We need to get the, we need to get the chief some bloody medical aid, please. Speaking of medical aid, the other medics in the water too, and we're about to run him over. Somehow we've managed to dodge all of those shots. Okay, I've got more control now. It was very difficult to control for a second there. Every time I put in the input, it was maybe two second delay, it felt like. So before I knew it, I'd already given the opposite order. It's a skill issue. It was adrenaline, I was panicking. Blame the system all you want, it was the man. <laughs> oh well, let's go and get our targets. Murray Baker, the CEO, is still... He's refusing medical aid. He's like, nope. It's just a bit of blood. I don't care. It's probably their blood. So Mr. Murray Baker is showing a bit of stoic determination. He's, he's a gritty man. He doesn't speak much. He hates cameras. Let's try and get him to talk about his exploits. Bet you you can't. All right, rockets out. Oh, two rockets went stray there. We're suffering a s absolute storm of gunfire from the coastal boats. I honestly can't really see what they're doing. So it's hard to get a bead on the torpedoes. So much flak, so much 20 millimeter autocannon. We're out of ammo, we're out of repair kits. We have a man overboard. Stanley who came aboard before, wounded, is still wounded. We have a few medical kits available. We might shoot this coastal to death, something exploded. Fifty cal able to light up the remaining tanker.
All the supplies coming up now. Trying to get the man aboard, but we've just lost another. This time, lo and behold, Vittori overboard. We're absolutely surrounded by... They're dialing us in. Get out of here. Where's our other man? Come on, man, get on. Do you want to live forever? <laughs> You won't live forever if you keep doing that sort of shit. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, where's our target? There he is. Light him up with some rockets. I need to try and get a better angle for Torpedo Strike. In the meantime, we'll collect all our supplies. Just as we turn around, he should be running out of space. He's, he's running into shore. But the closer he gets, the more risk we're at. Overcooked the engine again. More rockets. I think that's going to be the way we take him down. He is presenting a good angle now as he runs out of water to sail on. But he's going down. The rocket strike was successful. I'm not going to worry about those supplies. That's just way too dangerous. We're out of med kits. We're out of supplies. We're out of ammo. We have a few rockets left. But this is one angry base. So I'm going to use the rocket site just to give me a better view of where these shells are going to land. I'm going to have to duck and weave and dodge our way out. I think we're getting through the worst of it. That was a good solid minute of dodging. Okay, well, I think I'm going to have to leave that there, guys. That was pretty chaotic, and I need something to eat after those missions. If you're enjoying the Boat Crew series, make sure to hit the subscribe button, because I'll make sure they keep coming as long as you keep liking them. Until then, the crew of PT-104 and Mr. Murray Baker wish you good night.